So this is Jerry Mathis, field agronomist in South Dakota with Vex Hybrids. Joining me today is Dale Victoria, uh, field agronomist in, in Southeast Minnesota. And we're here today to talk about some of the confusion over some of the, the corn traits that are new and upcoming on the line. And just want to get a give guys a better understanding of what some of this is and where we use them. And with the three main players being Bayer, Corteva, and Syngenta, uh, Dale, why don't we go ahead and get started with with Syngenta, what they do carry and, and what they cover and, and where we use those products. Sure. Okay, so uh, on the Syngenta side, um, first we'll just start out with kind of our above ground. Um, the first one would be our AgriSure 3010s. And uh, within Vex, we call those the BRs. And really what we're looking at there is we have uh, glyphosate and liberty tolerance, and we have one mode of action for corn borer. OK, uh, the refuge requirements on these are 20 percent structured, so they are not in the bag refuge. OK, um, and then we go into our Agrisher Viptera 3110s uh, at Bex. We call them the VRs. So here with these VRs, we have glyphosate and liberty tolerance. We have a one mode of action for corn borer, but then we pick up one mode of action for our broad LEP control. And really what we're looking at there, it'd be, uh, you know, insects such as black cutworm, fall army worm, corn earworm, things like that. Uh, again, these are only 20% uh, structured refuge, so they are not in the bag control, okay? Uh, so then we kind of keep ratcheting up, Jerry. Then we go to our 3120 easy refuge. Uh, these we call within Bex BZs. Um, so here, the one different thing we got with the 3120s is we only have glyphosate tolerance, okay? Um, there we have two modes of action for corn borers and one mode of action for broad leps. And here we change directions a little bit. These are actually in the bag refuge, okay? So we don't have to worry about doing a structured refuge uh, like the previous two we talked about. So they, they come as a 95.5 blend in the bag um, within our area. Okay, then we keep ratcheting up and we go to the 3220s. Uh, again, they're easy refuge. These we call within Bex the VZs. Again, we only have glyphosate tolerance. And then we pick up two modes of action on corn borer and two modes of action on the broad leps, okay? So remember, those broad leps, those would be like your cutworms, your army worms, stock borers, corn earworms, all that good stuff. Uh, these, again, are 95.5 blend in the bag, so no ref refuge concerns there uh, on the structured side, okay? And then we kind of ratchet up now into the Duracade section. Uh, we have the 5122s, which are the D1s, and here, again, only glyphosate tolerance, but we have uh, two modes of action on corn borer, one mode of action on the broad leps, and then we also pick up two modes of action on corn rootworm. So here we're kind of getting into that corn rootworm control. Uh, again, they're 95.5 in the bag, so refuge isn't a concern there. It's already loaded into the bag. No need to worry about that. Um, so that's our D1s. And now we'll go into the D2s, um, which are called 5222s. Um, here, what we're looking at is basically the same thing as a D1, but we pick up another mode of action, Jerry, for the broad leps. Okay. So, um, so really, what we're really looking at there, the difference in that B, D1 and D2, uh, the big thing, I guess, for me is. We pick up Western bean cutworm control, and then we pick up more control on those uh, fall army worms and corn earworms uh, with the D2s over the D1s, okay? So that, that's kind of that Syngenta uh, play where we're at right now, Jerry. Okay, that sounds great. I know there's some new stuff on the Bayer side as well. So when we start looking at above yeah. ground, we're used to what everybody yeah. calls a double pro, but there's a new above ground one there. Why don't you go ahead and explain that, Dale? Yeah, so uh, the new above ground one out of the bear camp is called Tricepta, okay? So, and uh, and really what we're looking at here, it's uh, pretty much the exact same thing as our double pros that we're used to, other than we are adding Viptera, okay? So remember, when we, when we start looking at adding Viptera, we start picking up things like uh, control on black cutworm and western bean cutworm, 
and corn earworm kind of gives us some more control there. Okay, so it's a it's a nice add to that uh, to that double pro line bringing on the Tricepta gives us some more of that above ground control on some of those broad laps. Okay, okay. so that's kind of that that's kind of the above ground from the bear camp that's new. And I guess I wouldn't say it's necessarily new, but uh, right. we really haven't had many options for it as we come north very far. And there's going to be some newer options that way. Um, right. And guys might want to take a look at that. So so now we start looking at the, the new above and below, and there's some changes there as well with some RNAi technology in that. So what's new yeah. on, on that side of things? Yeah, so uh, from the bear standpoint, um, we're all pretty used to the smart stacks. Uh, they've been along or around for quite some time. Um, they've added a lot of value for us in our heavy corn marketing areas over the years. And uh, and what's newer on that side is a couple uh, two seasons ago we brought on the uh, smart stacks pros. And really, what we're looking at with the smart stack pros is uh, just like smart stack, we have uh, liberty and glyphosate tolerance. And but we pick up one additional mode of action uh, for corn rootworm, and that is called the RNAi. So it's a, it's a different uh, trait to help really uh, you know disrupt the gut of that insect of that corn rootworm and uh, give us some more control. So that that's what's new on the bare uh, totally above ground side is truly that SmartStacks Pro. Just remember, it's basically the same as SmartStacks, but then we're adding um, the RNAi. Okay. And then the, sure. what's then then what's new uh, newer on the uh, bear side as well is a VT4 Pro, okay. And really, what we're looking at here with these VT4 Pros is like a double Pro. They kind of give us everything that we're after there, but we're adding Viptera to it as well, okay. Um, so we're getting a little bit more uh, above ground, uh, some from some broad lep control. And then we're also introducing the RNAi. So the same trait that's in the SmartStacks Pro, we're bringing forward with the VT4 Pro. Now, the one difference here with VT4 Pro is, is we are actually dropping the Herculex. So here in the VT4 Pros, we have two modes of action for corn rootworm, which is our uh, yield guard and our RNAi, but we're dropping that Herculex. Why that's important is historically, we've had some issues with Herculex. It's a great trade, but sometimes corn products have a hard time accepting it. And we see some uh, quote unquote, I call them yield drags uh, from that Herculex trait. So the VT4 Pros, um, they'll give us some rootworm control. Maybe let's look on some of that lower to moderate pressure acre. Um, and I think they can be an added player for us. The big thing here though to remember, VT4 Pros are only Roundup resistant. You cannot spray Liberty on a VT4 Pro like you can with the Smart Stacks and the Smart Stacks Pro. So we just make sure we got to be mindful of that, Jerry. So we got rid of the Hercules rootworm, the Hercules corn bore, and the Liberty trait when we dropped that Hercules. So just oh. remember that <clears throat> as you're going out there in the field. And, and it is a new, newer technology, and there's some um, pretty good excitement for some higher yields that way too so so now we move into the corteva traits so there's some some new stuff there that there hasn't been a lot of what i would call the power core stuff out there um yep. we've had the nems out there so but there's a, a couple of different levels of the power core so yeah what's your take on yeah, so when we look at uh, the power core side, um, really what we're doing there is uh, I think we're going to be replacing the AMs with power cores. Okay, so think of a power core, uh, power core enlist as your double pro, um, but we're picking up some insect or um, excuse me, some herbicide control here. So we have the enlist technology. So basically you have the capability of spraying power core corn with the enlist, um, uh, the 240 choline, which is, uh, you know, the enlist chemistry. And, uh, it, you know, when you think about it, um, what it really does, it gives us more flexibility. You know, years ago, we used to spray 240 on corn. I remember as a kid, dad always said, hey, it's got to be smaller than a pop can or else you don't want to be spraying 240 because it's a growth regulator, right? You'll mess some things up. Well, with the power core, with the enlist technology, it allows us to extend that out and we can spray a little bit bigger corn 
with that uh, with that 240 and not have quite the sensitivity. But we're also bringing on um, some FOP tolerance as well, okay, with PowerCore. So when you think about a FOP, that's a corn killer, okay? So this is where it sounds a little bit weird, Jerry. Um, so your FOPs, think of products like uh, Assure 2 or Fusilade. Um, really, what we can do is now with the power Power core, you can actually spray a FOP on power core corn. Okay. Um, do not confuse this with the DIMS. Okay. So, another corn uh, killer herbicide that we use quite regularly is Clethodim, um, also known as like a Select. Um, that is not tolerant. Um, so, if you spray Select or Clethodim on power core corn, you will kill it. So it, it the only one you can spray on this power core corn is the FOP group. And, um, you know, you might kind of wonder, Jerry, well, why is that important, right? Why do we need that? Um, I think uh, as we think about it, um, there's some areas of the country that they have uh, glyphosate resistant grasses of some sort. I think of Johnson grass in particularly down south. They can't kill it with Roundup, right? So this can be a tool that you could actually spray a FOP on it and control it in the in your cornfields. Um, are we going to have a huge play for it up here in our northern region? I don't necessarily see us spraying a lot of FOP um, on this power core corn, Jerry, but it's just another added option that we have, okay? But uh, we just need to be mindful of what we're spraying. So ask. Asking questions right. is a good thing. Exactly. Make sure you talk to your chemical supplier on that to make sure you're getting the right product out there so we don't have a dead cornfield. And yep. I guess one of the areas that I could possibly see some guys in a corn on corn situation, that's where they're going if they've got a lot of volunteer stuff. Sure. And if, if you had a double pro the year before, as an example, and for some reason had a problem, and you could use that FOP to help clean some of that up. Yep. So that's the above yep. ground stuff. So there's also new traits on the, the above and below ground side of things, what Corteva calls vor seed. So we have their chrome version and we have their vor seed. What's the difference on that, Dale? Yeah, so basically the difference is um, vor seed is uh, going to give you, you're going to pick up the RNAi technology. So think SmartStacks Pro is basically... Um, what Vorseed's going to look like. Um, the big difference there is, is, is where they're using the molecular stack that they used in Chrome in the Vorseed. So a little bit maybe cleaner conversion from their standpoint, but then also in the Vorseed, so we're picking up that RNAi, but we're also giving us that Enlist and FOP tolerance as well on the herbicide side. So, um, so it kind of gives us a little bit more opportunity there um, from a herbicide standpoint. So that, that's really what Vorseed's going to look like for us going forward. And you're going to see um, that's really the the, the trait that's going to come forward out of uh, out of the Corteva camp um, to kind of replace some of them Chrome products or that Chrome trait. Okay. So the biggest thing, like you said, that we're picking up there is the RNAi technology as well as the Enlist side of things. So we can spray yep. the 2,4-D choline or the, the FOPs. So um, yep. hopefully this brings some clarity to, to some of these trait things. If there are additional questions, you can get a hold of anybody in the back side of things and they should be able to help you out with that. And just make sure you talk to your chemical supplier to make sure you're getting the right chemicals on the right cornfield because we do not like to have problems. I guess with that, Dale, we'll kind of wrap this up and, and thanks for, for listening and thanks for the for that information, Dale. And we will catch you another day and have a great day. Thank you.